Okay, cool. I'll start here. Um, my name's Elijah, um, as the name suggests on here. And uh, we're in Sao Paulo today, which I'm very grateful for. This is a mad blessing. Um, if you want to ask questions or like investigate the page while I'm talking, it's cool. So it's just E-L-I-1-A-H. And um, I've been posting these uh, yellow squares in Instagram, these kind of ideas, thoughts, and uh, provocations for a year and a half. And um, I'll talk about some of them and why I'm here in Brazil today and how much uh, some of the music coming from Sao Paulo, Rio has inspired work that I do back in London. So yeah? Yeah. Ele disse que ele está aqui para falar um pouco sobre como que é o projeto do, dos quadros amarelos. Ele começou como uma provocação né, sobre a perspectiva dele, sobre o, o trabalho dele dentro da música e como que o Rio e São Paulo inspirou a ele a fazer os trabalhos dele e evoluir dentro da música também. E antes ele falou que ele está muito animado e para ele essa situação é completamente estranha, comparando onde ele estava durante o ano da pandemia, 2020, 2021. Então, para ele, é muito legal para ele estar tá aqui animado. Yeah. Um, so, this is me. Um, I'm a lot of things right now. My day-to-day -day job is an artist manager, but um, I write and share ideas and kind of consult for different companies. I've been known on the internet as like a DJ. I've been playing grime music for 15 years. Uh, I lecture sometimes at universities and places like this, and when we can pop up in different spots. And I'm just figuring out like how to make work, share ideas in the most effective way, keep things free, keep things fluid. And I guess I'm just exploring being an artist in a really unusual way at the moment. So um, yeah, that's what my Instagram feed looks like. This is footage from uh, label night butters that I started. This is my ID card from a university that I've been working with called SOAS in London. And uh, this is like me DJing with this uh, yellow square thing in the background still. So I've been kind of developing what this project is. It's still not fully formed. It's just a set of ideas that I've been gradually sharing over the past year and a half. But I've been working in music now for nearly 15 years. Eddie é um artista que trabalha há mais de 15 anos na música, mais focado na eletrônica e no grime, e esse projeto tem sido algo que ele explora as possibilidades dele enquanto artista. Então, ele é DJ, ele é manager de vários artistas, e muitas pessoas conhecem ele por conta disso, mas tem muita gente agora que conhece ele como palestrante por conta do projeto do Yellow Square. E ah, acho que é isso. <risos> yeah. And uh, this is the label that uh, I started in 2010. It's called Butters. And uh, we released uh, grime music and UK kind of bass in London. And we uh, released music from Swindle, who's played here before. Uh, DJ Q, Roll T, Flavor D, and my partner Skillium. Um, we've put on club nights, raves, and stuff in London. So some of the famous like grime MCs have come. Like this is like Skepta and Jamie with uh, Joker from, this is 10 years ago this week, actually, that picture was taken, which is pretty cool. This is a picture uh, from Tokyo, which I, I love. Um, but this is my link to Brazil. So grime, this energy um, is kind of like our funk, our dancehall, our rap, our electronic music from, like I'm from London, and uh, I'd say grime is born in East London, where I come from. And um, it's the music that I've been involved with for a long time. Então, grime é um estilo de música e a cultura que ele está envolvido desde sempre. Butters é a label dele, que lançou vários artistas, inclusive o Skillian, que é o parceiro dele e sócio nessa, nesse projeto. E aí ele mencionou que algumas dessas fotos, uma foi tirada dez anos atrás, inclusive essa semana, e a outra foi de quando eles foram fazer a turnê no Japão. Sweet. And, um, I guess that my window into like Brazilian culture, like obviously I have many layers of this, but a few years ago I was watching uh, the Brazilian Grime show on YouTube and I found it like super inspiring. I discovered a lot of MCs and um, these are just, I guess in London and the UK, they're not as receptive to sounds from outside of uh, America or maybe like West Africa or, or Jamaica. And um, I was 
playing people's music from here in, in London alongside the grime from the UK. Um, but, you know, Fleezus and Fibemba in particular, they stood out and I was like, damn, we were sharing this video, a lot of the scene in the UK. I was going like, these guys are sick. Like, what's happening here? And uh, gradually, um, I started linking up and talking to Cecilia and they made uh, a project and I was just, uh, just a fan of what was happening, but I couldn't figure out a way to get involved or, or show love apart from just sharing it on Instagram or sharing it on Twitter. So that's most of my energy in 2019 um, was just that. That's all I was doing. And um, I was getting a lot of love back, a lot of love back from the scene here and the MCs. And um, I, f I was like f trying to figure out a way that I could uh, bring some value and um, promote what is happening here in, in the UK. Ele se interessou muito pela música brasileira, em especialmente o movimento do grime que estava sendo criado no Brasil. Ele acompanhava muito os sites do Brasil Grime Show e aí ele viu o vídeo do Flesas e do Febem e eles se destacaram. E ele começou a pensar em formas que ele poderia linkar e poder é, alavancar e, e fazer o suporte para esses artistas, além de só compartilhar a música, de só compartilhar no Instagram, no Twitter, enfim. E em Londres as pessoas não são tão receptivas para músicas que não são de origem norte-americana ou do oeste da África. Então ele começou a tocar essas músicas que tinham influência de grime brasileiras no set dele e a galera começou a ter essa recepção e aí ele começou a ter o, a conexão com o pessoal daqui, Cezinha e todos os outros. So I was like crazy excited. Um, I reached out to Cecilia in uh, the beginning of 2020, or well, the end of 2020, after Brian had been out uh, for a while, this record that they put out with for Ben and Fleezus. And I was like, I want to release it on vinyl record, have uh, promote it in Europe, sell it, sell the vinyl and put the first Brazilian grime music on vinyl and you know send it here to, to people in, in Brazil. And um, the whole experience was crazy. It was in lockdown. A lot of uh, manufacturing was shut down. It was super expensive, super like chaotic. It was a really like kind of dark time, but it was one of the things that was uh, keeping me going, inspired, excited about music still, and waiting for an opportunity for when things open up again out of the pandemic for us to like meet up and work. So I was speaking to them through Instagram and through uh, iMessage, and. Uh, we made the made the vinyl, which took about six months. I sold it on online. I said, oh, I'll send it to Brazil for free shipping, which was uh, <laughs> <laughs> free shipping from the UK. Ended up costing uh, me and my partner, Skillium, uh, 5,000 pounds. So I spent a lot of money trying to get the records here. So when I saw the vinyl here in Brazil, I was like hugging people, I was so excited um, for it to be here. And um, I was really proud of this project. Proud of the, the set that um, we shared on uh, YouTube, it's nearly a million plays, which is crazy. And really, it's like one of the like most exciting records that I've worked on on label. And I hope um, this is like the beginning of a working relationship between London, Brazil, you know, Sao Paulo and East London, whatever it's going to be, like, probably she's come to London. And we just want to continue that link and it not just stop there with this record. You talk a lot now. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Let me take my breath now. In 2020, they started to conversar por mensagem, ele, Cezinha. So it was a vai vem de mensagens, because it was na época que estavam as restrições do Covid, então eram tempos bem complicados, ele decidiu fazer o projeto em, em vinil e custou muito caro, porque ele resolveu mandar de graça para cá sem cobrar o, o frete, e aí ele queria poder manter essa conexão com os artistas aqui do Brasil, e não somente ser um projeto que é, não teria um legado, então para ele foi muito importante se conectar com as pessoas, aí ele mencionou que eu fui para lá também, I still didn't go my record, by the way, but, é, <risos> mas é, o, o, ponto, o ponto inicial era ter essa junção e mostrar todas as peculiaridades e, e como a gente divide muito mais é, similaridades né, da, da música, tanto em Londres e East London, que é onde nasceu o grime, e aqui em São Paulo. Uh, 
<laughs> so this is last night. I got to see the show for the first time in the flesh and meet uh, for them Fleezers for the first time. And um, I was very excited, uh, watched the whole show. And I think my connection with the music is through melodies and not so much words because um, I don't understand Portuguese. But when I hear everyone singing back, I know the points now where everyone gets excited. And it made me understand the music better. It made me think Fleezers is, is an awesome MC as well, like crazy, crazy voice. Um, appreciate you all. And um, it was just surreal to see it again because we were doing this in lockdown. I had no expectation of um, what the impact in Brazil was actually like. I just knew that I liked the music. It could have not been actually big here. It could have just been something that I liked and be fine. But I'm, I'm so happy that, you know, it's worked out for the guys and um, everyone seems to enjoy it and it's got like an audience and fan base, you know? Ontem foi a primeira vez que ele pôde ver o show ao vivo e conhecer o Flesos e o Febem é, pessoalmente. E aí, para ele, a conexão com a música é mais pela melodia, os instrumentais, já que ele não, não, não fala o idioma. Então, ele pôde ver pelo público quão era forte e qual, quais músicas eram mais significativas do projeto. E foi basicamente isso. I'm so glad that I got that on camera. <laughs> Um, so yeah, that's kind of like how I got to Brazil and like why I'm here and exp kind of ex exploring. I was in Rio last week and I'm writing a book about grime and Brazil is like the last chapter in the book. So um, the book spans the last, I guess, 20 years. And um, I couldn't finish the book without coming to Brazil because, you know, you made such an impact on the scene, which is a, a small scene in the UK, but it's, um, it's a very important cultural thing. and. I wanted to make sure that it was included authentically. Yeah? Ele está escrevendo um livro que vai recapitular os 20 anos de Grime e ele diz que o Brasil é o último capítulo desse livro e ele não poderia terminar o livro sem estar tá presente aqui e ver como é a cultura aqui. Em Londres ainda a, a cena do Grime é muito pequena, embora a gente acredite que é, é muito forte, mas não, não é tanto. A galera lá não é tão unida assim. Então, para ele vir aqui e poder fazer essa conexão é, é muito importante para poder finalizar esse livro. And now um, I'm going to talk about the, the ideas from Instagram, so the yellow squares. Um, I've been trying to make them in real life, so they're not just something that you look at on the phone. It's something that we you get to discuss with people, um, like put it in the football stadium and on the big stages and outside with uh, billboards and what how I see these this. Uh, yellow squares is ideas, not advice, experiments, observations, possibilities, art, history, memes, vibes. I don't know. Sometimes I'm just playing around, full, being an idiot. And uh, I, it's just like a, a way for me to be creative daily that doesn't take a lot of um, you know, time and energy. It's something that's quite light, and I really enjoy sharing them each day. You know? So I started de como começou, né, os, os Yellow Squares, é mais para ele se mostrar criativo de uma forma que não vai demandar tanto tempo dele, tanta energia, mas que mesmo assim vai manter ele em movimento. Então, ali ele lista o que são é, os quadros amarelos para ele. Então, são ideias, não conselhos, experimentos, observações, possibilidades, arte, história, vibes e memes. Então, não é, não é nada que é para se levar à risca, mas é sobre a experiência dele, a perspectiva dele, como pode ajudar outros artistas também. Thank you. Um, so this whole thing is trying to develop into, you know, a way to kind of make creative education accessible. So this is free today. A lot of the information I'm sharing is just trying to be as free as possible. I want uh, good progressive ideas to be out there sharing, rather than say like you, you can only pay for this course, so it's only accessible to a certain type of person or a certain institution. All I'm taking is everything that I've learned in the industry over the past 15 years and, you know, sharing where I think things are going next and maybe um, how different generations or younger generations or new people that are interacting with it can learn from it or do something completely different to, to, to how I would approach things. So um, I'll go on to the next slide, but the big thing? No, let me do that okay. first. 
Então, basicamente, é, os acessos ele quer criar para todo mundo, e não somente pessoas que vão poder pagar pelo acesso à informação. Então, por isso que ele cria vários outros formatos, o que eu esqueci de falar no, no anterior, é que ele está tentando fazer os quadros amarelos ser tangíveis. Então, colocando outdoors pela cidade, em pontos específicos, porque não são só outdoors, mas são... É, em, em pontos que são, como a gente consideraria, as quebradas daqui. Então, para essas pessoas que ele quer atingir, pessoas mais novas, que vão pegar a informação dele e fazer diferente de como ele fez, ou seguir os conselhos dele como ele, como a pessoa achar melhor. Yeah. So, you know, like some of these main points are building like a skill set that you can use as a freelancer or a full-time employee or as an artist. So, I try and not everyone is going to be like a pop star or like a big rapper or producer or something, but I feel like all of the skills that we learn along the way, so whether that's filming, producing, recording, we can apply this a bit more broader, like a bit more uh, in a lot more use cases. So if you're a journalist, for example, and then you learn how to film and then you kind of learn some design skills, you've got like a completely different set of ways of communicating that an average journalist wouldn't. Or if you're an artist, but you understand AI, for example, then you can have a job at the same time as exploring your art. Does that make sense? Então, é, uma das, das primeiras, né, que ele fala, uns primeiros conselhos que ele que ele traz é como você pode construir um set de habilidades, né, o skill set que ele fala, que vai te transformar em um um profissional excepcional. Então, se você é um jornalista que sabe filmar, que sabe editar, você vai ser um profissional completamente diferente do que os outros que estão no mercado. Ou se você é um músico que trabalha com inteligência artificial, provavelmente você vai ter oportunidades que uma pessoa que não tem isso é, vai ter. Yeah, and I guess a lot of the way things are being taught right now is like, if you do this, you will get this. Like, if you make I don't know, if you're going to have a marketing plan, you should get a result. And I try and challenge this kind of thinking through sharing ideas, like approaching things completely differently to the standard way of doing things. Ele tenta trazer também é, que as fórmulas nem sempre vão ser válidas, nem sempre vão funcionar. Então, você precisa entender o que vai funcionar para você e aplicar da forma como você acha que vai funcionar e não acreditar que se você fizer uma coisa, vai resultar em outra coisa, sendo que tem uma série de outras é, possibilidades ali que vão interferir no processo. Um, and then, a couple of points. So, financial literacy and understanding and financial kind of transparency. So, um, like working on the records, it's important that everyone understands the business of what we do. Um, it's clear to people what they're getting involved in. It's clear, um, you know, how you're budgeting and spending money. And, like, having a, like a deeper understanding of maybe why deals are set up in the way they are is like super important but i think the way music industry is taught is it's done one way and it doesn't need to be that way like you can it can be however you want and we have this saying like an industry standard but we only want to use an industry standard if it serves the artist well então, no mundo da música, tem muitas é, normas que as pessoas acham que devem ser seguidas, e nem sempre isso funciona. E aí ele traz ali que ser transparente é primordial para falar sobre finanças e como você construiu aquele projeto. Porque nem sempre a pessoa que está vendo ali ela vai ter os mesmos acessos que você para poder construir aquilo. Então, poder compartilhar isso é uma, é uma forma importante. Inclusive, um dos quadrados que ele postou, todo mundo debatendo sobre isso, se devem falar realmente quanto o DJ ganha, quanto o MC ganha, quanto a pessoa que faz a produção musical ganha por projeto, sendo que cada um vai ter uma oportunidade diferente. Então, ter essas conversas é sempre muito importante. Yeah, and building confidence around kind of new technology, new ways of doing things. Like it's important that we're, you know, we're all moving forward. This world is moving so fast. Um, I get kind of scared when people say, oh, I don't want to engage with this thing. I don't want to use this app because I'm scared of it. I think what I'm trying to show myself, uh, my age group, is that I I started YouTube last year. I'm 35 years old. They're not too old to, to get cracking or to get started. Um, Instagram I never used really before the Yellow Squares project. I've got to put myself out there. The, you know, it doesn't, these are not things that I'm necessarily confident at doing, but uh, over time, the practice and the, the, the kind of going back, on, back and forth with it 
It makes me understand the technology on how I can use it and it not use me. Praticar a confiança é, em meio às novas tecnologias é muito importante. Ele está falando que, com 35 anos, ele começou a produzir conteúdo para o YouTube só o ano passado. Então, entender como usar essas plataformas. E o Instagram também, ele não usava antes do projeto. E deixar você ter autonomia ao ponto da plataforma não usar você. Então, você usar com sabedoria e saber como você vai usar cada plataforma para cada finalidade. Sim. Yeah. And... I guess the final kind of big principle is like peace with this being an uncertain path to take. So if you decide to be an artist or do artistic things, like there's no guarantees of anything. You can work on something for years and nothing happen and then something happen. Things come out of nowhere that are quite random and uh, you just have to get used to it and be comfortable with that as a fact. Like there's no formula, there's no like, oh, if you do this, you're going to get that. You just have to be at peace with that to, to move forward. and. Uh, I try to all my work. I try and say, just find peace in not knowing. Like no one knows what's going to happen next, and being able to have the energy to keep going, even when it seems you're getting like no result. Então ter paciência e paz no caminho não certo é primordial, porque oportunidades elas vêm e aparecem quando você menos espera. Então você entender que o caminho é incerto vai te dar mais paz, vai te dar mais tranquilidade para poder seguir e continuar com o foco no objetivo final. Cool. I sound like a coach now. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't mean to sound like a coach, but... No, me. I mean... Does... Uh, we're kind of like... Do, do, uh, does anyone want to ask any questions at this, this point? Alguém quer fazer alguma pergunta até esse ponto? Hey, uh, hey. I'm Arthur, my name. Uh, Slake's my project. And as an artist, you know, uh, a career, we have our up, ups and downs. And you have any strategy for, like, keeping your mind straight and, you know, trying to overcome the problems uh, towards uh, our career or anything like that? For, for me, um, when something feels like it's going down, I weirdly, like, work on other things because then it, it feels like it takes the pressure off that one thing being the, the whole, you know what I mean, your whole energy. I see this a lot with artists. Maybe you're doing one artist project and then it's you're not sure where to go with it next. Actually, just starting something new and having the excitement of something. If you're starting something with a friend, for example, collaborating and doing something that's a bit out of your comfort zone. And then you can return to your own project with fresh eyes. You know what I'm saying? So I, I see this a lot. Like when you say, like if you're making drum and bass, for example, and you've been doing it for years, but then you hit this wall and then it's like, hmm, let me just not even to release it or to build a brand out of it, just try and make in something else, try and make a rap music and just see where it goes creatively. And then you can approach the, the thing that you're more passionate about or more want to dedicate your time to a bit differently. Does that make sense? So your process kind of changes a bit. And I, this project is forcing me to do things that I just wouldn't have done before. So like talking in front of people, designing. And my drawing's going to get better, by the way. It's uh, one day. But... You can see my drawing's not very good, but it doesn't matter. It's just like getting the ideas down. Yeah, I got you. Like making sure to put ourselves and push ourselves outside the box. And exactly. Try to find outside the stuff. yellow square. <laughs> yeah. Nice. <laughs> Thank you. I just want to like have a conversation rather than me like lecturing. Like this is crazy. <laughs> Hi, Elijah. Uh, hey. I'm Tiago. Um, there's a lot of talk about uh, the creative economy and how people like sort of like take their passion and start working in what they love and sort of like put a lot of faith that's really going to work out and that they can sort of like drop their uh, nine to five work and be a full time creator. How do you see that? What's your opinion on that? Do you think that by following your passion, there's no limits or as you said, like you should keep your expectations low and just like go with the flow. What's, what's your point on that? Yeah, it's for every kind of uh, discipline, there's like, a transferable skill that you can probably work in, if, if that makes sense. So um, if it's like music production, for example, the, the concentration needed could probably, you could learn how to code. Like it's the same computer, same machine, same kind of, you know, putting things together, things in boxes, design. And like if you can spend, let's, let's just say 80% of your time doing something that is gonna keep you afloat, surviving, paying your bill, 
and then twenty percent on your passion, and then try and try and expand the passion bit to the until it gets to halfway, and then you're like, okay, now I can dedicate more time to this. I I'm like a big thinker on more survival first and taking care of your family and kids or whatever you need to do, and then that making the art kind of not easier, but you approach it differently. I think sometimes the when you just put a hundred percent on art, you need the result fast and you're gonna make a completely different thing. There's pros and cons to both, but um, it depends where you're at as a as a person and what your responsibilities are. There isn't like a one size fits all. But this project is like my, I guess like a side project. My day job is still like artist manager, um, which is uh, quite strange, I guess now, because this thing is quite, has gone quite big, you know? Um, I still need to do the day job to do this, if that makes sense. And it's good to keep it free as well. Like it wouldn't be weird if I was like charging for it. Thanks. Cool. Uh, hi. Uh, well, when you mention uh, financial transparency, uh, I, I I got got it got me thinking. Inside electronic music market, when you you don't have like ta a table where you have the prices for the DJs or the events, and it's all about um, guessing or just making a proposal or making an offer, and then this is so uh, uh, not une it's uneven in between the the artists and the, the the record label. So how how can we go to from this to a financial transparency where you know how much the artist will cost or how much you have an idea, but you mm. have you never know, and then this is bad for both ways because you're like. Um, uh, giving a price to it all the time, and it's art. Yeah. So again, it goes against the idea of art that you don't give a price to art, but at the same time you do. So, how, what do you think about this? Yeah, I think I think about this a lot because um, I'm on both sides as like a manager, and I, I I put on shows sometimes as well. And promoters and people putting on shows have more power than they think. And I think like you shouldn't necessarily just pay whatever someone wants just because they say oh, I'm worth 10,000. It doesn't make any sense. If it doesn't make sense for you business-wise, you're going to lose money and it's going to cost you, like the rest of the artists not eating good, then you don't, wor don't work with that person. I feel like a bit of more fairness between everyone, that you can say to that artist or that manager, like, hey, if I pay you 10,000, everyone else is going to get 50. And if, you, if I pay you maybe 8,000, Everyone else can get 200, and everyone can eat better, and ev you know the ecosystem can continue. And I feel like uh, when I've been a bit more uh, firm with that, people are responsive. People are saying, "Oh, actually, yeah, it's probably better that this thing works, and n we don't lose shitloads of money." You know, um, it takes time though, and it depends on the artists and the relationships. If they deeply care about things continuing and surviving, then they will like embrace that. But if they don't, Fuck him. <laughs> hey, my name is Caio. Um, you talk like a lot of things that you you do for work, and can you talk a little bit to talk, uh, about how important is like this combination of skills that you have for like how one skill help help other and vice versa? Yeah, sure. Um, that it's been built over a long period of time. So I've been DJing for uh, 18 years. So maybe I don't work on that as much. Writing feels like I've been doing that since I was a child as well. So it, it doesn't. it's not like another job. Um, so um, if I take out those two, the rest feel, I don't know, like a bit lighter. Uh, so sometimes when you're looking at someone's career or someone that's a bit further down the line, you're like, how do they do so much stuff? It's just because they've accumulated it over a longer period of time, rather than doing it all actively at once. So I don't DJ all the time, maybe like once or twice a month. Um, obviously I'm writing every day, but everyone's writing every day into Instagram, into DMs, mine's, mine's just public. Um, I don't, some of the things, I'm not sure if, I'm not sure if I know. It just feels like the right way to go or right way to do it. And a lot of the like message with this thing is 
you'll make the thing is you're gonna find a way to do it that works for you, and it just feels like the way that works for me. I uh, know that's not a good answer, but that's going and trying things out and not having a fear of the title of a DJ, for example. Like a DJ is just a person that puts together music and shares it with other people, that's it. Like don't fear calling yourself a producer, don't fear calling yourself a photographer, don't fear calling yourself a writer. Like I don't have any books, but I'm still a writer, you know? Does that make sense? All right, I'm gonna do a, a few more and then um, uh, we'll, we'll jump back into translation, yeah? Um, I'll skip this one. And yeah, so this is like one of the main principles. So art is making within your means. I don't like, this is obvious to everyone here, but um, what I mean by this is not waiting for, for yourself until you have all the resources you think you need, all the equipment, all of the manager or agent or all of those kind of things. It's like the art is now, the art is what you can make with, like the, the songs I was hearing yesterday, the funk and stuff, like people are just, just raw as fuck, man, I love it. And um, that is art, that is the, the basis, like and uh, all of the music and scene that I come from is made with just like the, the rawest kind of equipment and don't worry about having and waiting for this kind of moment to become an artist. Once you decide to make art, you're an artist. Yeah. So, art is fazer o que você quer fazer com o que você tem, não esperar ter as ferramentas que você acha que é certo para poder fazer a arte. E aí ele mencionou que ontem ele estava ouvindo funk, que a música parecia que era muito crua, mas que isso não tem nada a ver, porque é a estética, é a arte, é como as pessoas fazem. Então, fazer com o que você tem e não ficar esperando é o mais indicado. Uh, do you have this saying here? Like, what was this saying in, in, would you say this here? Don't, like, trust the process. Do people say that? Sim. Yeah? So, I guess, yeah, in English you would say, like, trust the process, trust the process. But I, I don't ever know, understood what that meant. I feel like, test the process. If something doesn't work, try again, or try, try a different way of doing things, finding your own way. A lot of the time, the advice I've got from uh, people that are more senior to me, they just basically told me to do the same thing they did, which is never going to work, and it's never going to work for me in this period of time. So, and everything I do feels completely alien to them, and that feel that's the not the right way, but it feels more comfortable that they don't know what I'm doing, they're a bit confused and excited, and I don't know what they're doing, and that's it feels like a better exchange of ideas. So, this not trusting the pro uh, trust in the process really mangling like the way you make work, the, make, the way you share it, and doing things in a unique way to yourself. Basicamente, confia. <laughs> Confiar no processo. A gente precisa entender que cada um tem o seu tempo. Então, ele estava mencionando que para algumas pessoas que estavam próximas dele, o que ele estava fazendo não fazia sentido, mas fazia sentido para ele, para o tempo dele, para o processo dele. Então, basicamente, é isso. Perfeito. Um, yeah, this is kind of in the same thread. So time is the creative director. It means like what you're going to make today is going to be different to tomorrow. So the importance of if you can and if you've got the energy to make something, even if it's small, like every day or as as regular as possible, because you're going to, your environment forces you to create something different. Like your feeling coming back from this will make you create something different is if you hold it till Monday. And um, a lot of the writing that I produce is just on the day. So like when I wrote this, it just came out. It's not something that was thought about. I, I literally just wrote it and shared it, posted it, done. And if if I had that hesitation, um, I would never have published it. And this is now like one of the most like reshared of the writing so far. So um, it's really important just to um, to capture this these moments. Like yesterday um, at a concert, it felt like two years of like waiting for this excitement and yeah, like time, the, the time is now, man, like for real. Sorry. So, <laughs> então, basicamente, o tempo, o seu tempo é o diretor criativo da sua arte e do seu processo. E ontem ele disse que vendo o show, ele conseguiu ver concretizado dois anos de trabalho que para muita gente é muito tempo e para ele foi muito tempo, mas foi um tempo que compensou ali quando ele viu o projeto todo concluído. 
uh, and this is kind of how I approach social media. So I see social media, Instagram in particular, as an extension of my art form. So if you're like a rapper, for example, you work in sound and video, um, album, EP, singles, but your social media should be an extension of that whole art rather than it being just an advertising board. Like a lot of people just use social media in a, hey, I'm gonna be here, buy this, link in bio, that kind of thing. But the opportunity is right there for Instagram to be a canvas for your art, for it to be like the, if someone is only engages with you there, that's like a good entry point to what you do and is an extension of your creativity. So, yeah. Então, ele vê as mídias sociais, principalmente o Instagram, como uma extensão né, do, seu, do seu trabalho, e não só um, um outdoor onde você vai estar tá anunciando coisas, vai estar tá anunciando festas e produtos para comprar. Então, você entender que ali faz parte também de como você vai compartilhar o processo da sua arte. Então, ele divide ali muito bem, não como deveria ser, mas como ele imagina que é o Instagram para ele, especificamente. E é isso. Okay. Does anyone have any questions on social media? So, I'm sure as a head label, you know how it's hard for the Instagram algorithm to promote when you try to like just put out your music and things like this. So, have you found a way to kind of like work against this algorithm and get the music that you put out there to get, I don't know, like seen by other people because usually the whole social media thing just kind of works when you put your face on it you know so like when you want to share like a new music or something like that how do you go about it when i talk about artists they usually don't want to engage with it at all and it's like well you don't want to talk to your audience you don't want to like think about it like a conversation like what would actually get you excited about that music so if you're releasing something what makes you click out of a bio, open Spotify, save it to a playlist? Uh, most people don't think that way. They just think, oh, well, someone else is going to react differently because they're not a musician. But we ha all have the same motivations and cares, you know? So really deeply think about what forces you outside of that. What would make you jump and go, shit, I need to listen to that right now. This has intrigued me. And it might take uh, four or five attempts because Sometimes people just post a tune once and done. We're promoting this record still three years later, right? This, this Brian. Brian is from 2020, and we're still promoting the same record this February 2023. It, sometimes things take a long time to really dig in, and um, social media, just because it's moving fast, it makes you move on from your own ideas fast. The same with this, right? I could have posted for one year or one month okay, yellow squares is done now, red squares. It's like, no, stick to it and, and see it through. You know what I mean? If, it doesn't, if it's not disciplined to you, then other people can't invest too. You know? If it doesn't feel like you care, then they won't also. Yeah? Um, anyone else? Well, yeah. All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jump. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, man. Uh, when you say test the process, uh, what's the success point and the failure point? Because in our economy, the influential marketing is something really present, I believe, in the United Kingdom also. But right here, it's really about the numbers and, and these kind of figures, you know. Uh, for example, in lots of clubs here, uh, uh, it's really hard for you to play if you're not, if you don't have that, you know, numbers mm -hmm. and this kind of success, this kind of reward or something like that. But as an independent art artist, I know that there are things that engage a lot without making these marks. Yeah. So do you have a suggestion for us to to see if something is succeeding or something is failing throughout our process? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, thank you. Um, I think the, the route you're talking about is just a slower route and you have to like, 
embrace that. Like, not going for all the likes and the hype that's in the second in that moment is not like a bad thing. Uh, have another slide is like, connection is better than engagement. So you actually probably don't want all the numbers and all the likes. There's a lot of things I could do that would grow the page faster, for example, but it wouldn't make me connect with real people. I'd rather it be us, just us here, people that I, I feel like I've connected with properly, rather than it just being some surface level interaction or me like just lecturing people, you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, and that is the same feeling with DJing. Yeah, unless you maybe want to be like a, someone that plays to 10,000 people in a stadium, then that's a different thing. But if you just want to be someone that is, uh, you know, playing your style or sound in the club and experiment with things and want to do this for a very long time, then really drill down on that like connection part rather than the, the number part. It's like, it's, it's really hard to do that. I'm not, I have the same problem in London and the same problem everyone does. It's, it's, not, it's not exclusive to Brazil, trust me. Um, but I think um, these occasions when I've been able to talk to people and for you to all exchange with each other, this is why I asked everyone to introduce it, each other, is so you can make friends here and build a connection. So when you follow someone, you've seen them in real life and it's not just a like, it's a friend. It's someone that you've seen before. It's someone that you'll see again, hopefully. And maybe you'll go and build something. And that's more important than a comment. I don't even remember how many comments the things get uh, or care. No one cares. But you remember what the connections with people feel like, you know? Um, I think like when I linked up with the Bram guys, I had like a couple thousand followers. So it wasn't like I had a lot of followers. It was like about the people, you know? Um, any other question? Oh, yeah, you got one. Go, go, go. Um, so my question is regarding content creation, yep. especially for social media. Because um, the thing is, mm, since there are a lot of people doing it nowadays, it's kind of hard to get sort of a unique feel to what you're doing. Mm -hmm. So in that sense, if like the sort of thing that makes me kind of um, block myself from trying to do something new, is that I don't know if it's something new because there are so many people doing it, so it might as well be something that another person has already done, yeah. and it might have succeeded and it might have failed as well. Mm -hmm. So how do you keep like a fresh batch of ideas going for you, and how do you make it so that it doesn't stop you from wanting to continue w down that road, even if it's succeeding or not? Yeah, that's, that's a good question. I think like doing the thing that is like easiest for you and getting it done. So if you're saying it sounds like an idea that someone else might have done, they that might not be true. And it might not be true in the context of where you are and the music that you do. So I'm not the first person to post text on Instagram. I'm not the first person to post ideas and just write in and, and like, no. But I'm hopefully doing it in a unique and interesting way that every time I've done it, it's finding my own voice gradually. So maybe the first one was like someone else's. And you know, 200 posts later, it's fi it feels like mine. In the first one, you're gonna be remixing someone else. Everything is a remix or something, right? So don't feel like that's not a reason to start and get going. Like it's, that's super important. And what you said about uh, content, try not to think of the, the two things as separate. So social media as a canvas is seeing the things that you put onto socials as your art. It's not a separate thing, it's part of you. The content, don't see it as like this, oh, this is content for promoting something else. It's like, no, it's you, it's your, it's your work, it's something that you should be proud of and something that you should be able to look back in whatever, an amount of time and be like, yeah, I did that. And yeah, call it art, like content thing, whatever. Like, it's just, yeah, uh, cool. Um, we've got one up there and then we'll, yeah. we'll do a couple more. Hi. Hey. Um, at the same time that social media provides a chance for an artist to connect to a much broader audience that he would be able to do in person, <coughs> it also tends to present a highly edited and most of the times not very accurate version uh, of this individual's life. Yes. Um, how much do you think that this harms creativity and uh, what do you think of this constant comparison 
that uh, is basically the norm between uh, you know many artists, especially the the younger ones. Uh, yeah, the comparison all the time is is super negative. Like I'm not gonna doubt that, but all art and creation is edited. Like you know the the way you put together a song, you is edited. It's highly like curated. If you watch a film, that's highly created. All the scenes are laid out. Like use that as your comparison, maybe. But in terms of um, you know the real like psychological effects, I'm not a doctor. Like I don't know. Um, but when things do get a bit overwhelming, I just come off. I just shut it down. Um, there's been periods of time where I just do complete blackout for a month or three months. I'm not married to doing it daily. Um, I'm not married to what like reading it all the time. There are moments when, say, something pops off and you get excited and replying to a lot of DMs and stuff. Whoops. <laughs> um, but I, there's something that everyone has to learn as an individual. Um, and I don't, yeah, I don't have a solution. Some of these things I don't know the answer to, <laughs> and I hope that's okay because I'm, I'm, I'm no genius as this, ma is this clear, right now after talking for half an hour. Um, I'll do a couple more squares and then we'll do a few more questions. Eh? Um, oh <laughs> shit, <laughs> there's a few marketing people here. Maybe disagree. Okay, <laughs> so this is for artists. You don't need a marketing plan. You need a strategy you can execute for low cost or free consistently, that's flexible, fun, and promotes your work. So that's that's you. So sometimes we get all like into strategy. We're gonna like we're gonna do this on this day. We're gonna drop this on this time, and 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 then it doesn't happen. Actually, just a consistent, you know, momentum and wave is probably easier than moments and big drops, especially for an independent artist. If you're not like a a blockbuster film star or something, or you're not selling like a Marvel film, then don't promote your work like that. If you're not Beyonce or Drake or something, it, yeah, it's, it's too hard to promote yourself like like a pop star without those resources. You know. Então, basicamente, você não precisa de um plano de marketing. Você precisa de uma estratégia que você pode executar com um custo mínimo que vai ser consistente. Então, a chave aqui desse, desse slide é a consistência e como que você vai usar todas os, as ferramentas que você tem ao seu favor para poder executar aquele plano. Does, does, does everyone get that? Is that like... If it for me, it was a bit confusing to read out my life. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, some, some of these, like, I get very, like, a lot of disagreement. Like, it's people DM me and say, me, I'm an idiot. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> I, there's things on this I'm going to get wrong. And... I leave them up, and it's part of the art too, you know. Yeah, this is just a question that I've been asking people. Uh, if you couldn't talk about yourself, what would your timeline look like? If you couldn't post pictures of just you, what what would your timeline be? Como seria a sua timeline se você não não pudesse postar fotos de você nem o seu trabalho? Quem você promoveria? Qual seria o conteúdo que você ia falar? Does anyone want to answer? Alguém quer responder? I would post protest regarding everything, minorities, um, people that don't have the power that we have, you know, from being here and, you know, um, protest in general about everything, social inequity, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. That's a good. That's a good way to use social media. And I'm thinking about that's once I finish this project, <laughs> being like the the handle being just for other people's work, and just be something interesting, a bit different. Anyone else want to add a different point? While we're here, no. All right, we'll go to the next one. This is another one a lot of people disagree with. Uh, you can be a writer with no books. You can be a DJ with no shows. You can be a producer with no releases. You can be a something photographer with no exhibition. You can be a no. You can be a translator with three languages. I don't know, but you can be <laughs> like not fearing any of these titles. And again, once you decide you're an artist, you're an artist. Once you decide you're a dancer, you're a you dancer. And how you develop that is up to you. And since I've been thinking like this. 
it's given me a lot of confidence in not having the fear of taking on somebody's tasks. Like, okay, am I a producer yet? Yeah, yeah, I am. I've made some records. Like, I'm a producer. And it makes me less, um, yeah, less fearful about approaching any art form and not fearing it. And yeah, challenging myself. But people disagree with this. People think, oh, you need to do your 10,000 hours. Like, fuck that, man. Like, <laughs> yeah. Os títulos, eles não querem dizer nada a partir do momento que você designa eles para você. Então, se você considera que você é um DJ, mesmo que você não tenha tocado em nenhum show naquele mês ou naquele ano, você é porque você considera você de acordo com as suas habilidades ali e o seu pessoal. Então, não se atentar a isso é importante para você poder progredir e poder continuar com a sua carreira. Sweet. Does anyone want to disagree with that? Like, that would be kind of like a cool pushback. Alguém, alguém não concorda com isso? You don't agree? No, I'm asking if they don't okay. agree. I agree. <laughs> I'm here to prove, by the way. <laughs> okay. I'll accept that one. And I'll do one more. So, uh, maybe I should do it the other way around. So, the music industry is a monopoly, but music is free. So, music in general, making it, sharing it, Enjoying it is free for everyone. I don't mean like money-wise, but it's, it's the most free art form there is. Like, And uh, sometimes when I talk about music creating, I'm not someone that works at a major label or big company. I've always worked independent. Uh, I'm not talking about being a pop star. I don't know how to do that. I've never worked in that arena. Uh, all I know is creating and sharing. And some things I've done have worked. Most things I've done haven't. Um, Like probably nine out of ten things I do do not work, but it's the enjoyment of making and sharing that carries this whole thing, you know. But the music industry, like if you're trying to get into that, is a com completely different beast, which I still don't really fully understand. But try not to let that take away your enjoyment for you know the making and sharing of just music in general. Um, and I, I really like, you know, try and engage with myself. So like sometimes when I feel like I'm having a bad time with this stuff. It's usually industry things and not the music. The music is really the problem. Yeah. Então, a indústria da música é um monopólio, mas a música é de graça. Então, a música é a forma de arte mais grandiosa e é grátis. Então, não deixar que o fato da indústria ser um monopólio te desencoraje de fazer a música. É, ele menciona aqui para ele, muitas das vezes quando ele está triste com algumas coisas, é a indústria e não a música que deixa ele triste. Então, ter isso em mente, que são duas coisas diferentes, mas que elas se complementam também é importante. Sweet. So, does anyone want to ask any more questions while we're here? And I feel like it can be about anything to do with this project or how we're connected today. Because uh, I leave Sao Paulo on Sunday and I, you know, I might never come back. It might be just like a one-off thing. No, so If you want to say and share, then let's do it now and uh, make the most of the time, yeah? Hey. Hey. Um, I like to go back on two topics, okay? Sure. You were saying that how your timeline will look like if you can post, uh, if you c not can post your job and only your community. Okay, our community feed us up and You talk about your community, build up your identity too, because you share people's work that you identify. But talking about um, identity as a product, you know what I mean? Not just a product, but a product too. How can I, how can I say that? Uh, deal with the thing that I need to, sell my product and put another contents in there uh, can distract the objective of, from my product, you know what I mean? And take away some attention about why I'm really trying to say, you know what I mean? Yeah, kind of. I think, you see, the on my Instagram, the first The first square pinned is that question. But can you read it? It's it's this long like it's a long question. But if you if 
I think it's like the answer is here. Como eu posso garantir que eu vou ser pago e fazendo tudo que eu gosto com as pessoas que eu curto sem ter que pro promover enquanto eu estou vivendo abaixo de um padrão e vivendo em uma das cidades mais caras. This, I guess this we're all trying to figure that answer out and I'd, it's so like individual that it's really hard for me to answer. That's the most common question I get. And it's that thing where the process that you're going through is the art itself. Like what you're what you're thinking about and the way to communicate it is central to your creation. So I can't say you should do it this way. That when you when you find it, you find that avenue, that is the journey and the artistic way of doing things, you know what I'm saying? I can't answer that for you. Yeah, sure. Eu vou falar inglês para ele entender, mas eu vou falar também em português. I guess this is something that worked for me and I think it will work for a lot of people and I try to give this advice sometimes is people will relate to you when you show that you are human. So about the consistency that you mentioned and when you talk about your art as well. So if you only use your platform as a promote thing, it's never gonna work. So I think what it works for me is like that. Like I show my day to day all the time. It's not just like when I'm when makeup, when I'm doing jobs, when I'm, when I'm playing. I'm sometimes I don't post that I'm playing, but I post my day to day. So I think once you feel and when you do what you feel that is right for you, and when you share that, is when people will relate, and then we, they will buy your product without you even promoting. I think. Ai, desculpa. <risos> então, o que tem funcionado muito para mim é mostrar desde o começo como é a minha vida, mas de, de certa forma não mostrando algo muito exposto é, e ainda mantendo a minha privacidade. Então, as pessoas elas se tornam próximas a você quando elas acham que tem alguma coisa que elas podem relacionar. Então, quando você posta usando as, as plataformas não só para vender o seu trabalho, elas vão entender que elas precisam comprar aquele produto quando você posta e você nem está vendendo, porque elas se sentem próximas a você de alguma forma. Eu acho que é, é, é um conselho que funciona para mim. Hi. Uh, early in the conversation, uh, I think Peroli said that you were listening to funk and your comment was that it was like crude music, you know? But I actually, it relates to the this yellow card, like the music industry in the US, for example, or in the UK, like there's the industry standards, you know? Yeah. But like, how can we as artists and producers like know when to drop shit, you know? Like, not being caught up, like, no, no, this needs that, like, this song really needs that when, actually, when you listen to, like, in a JBL or, like, in your car, like, it's really, like, you know, blessing, you know? Yeah. So, <coughs> my question is, like, how to deal with that comparison, you know, between, yeah. like, industries? Because here, like you said, funk music really sounds crude for people not from Brazil, but it's, like, part of the aesthetics, you know? Yeah, yeah, like no, but I love it though. And it's not yeah, 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 and grime is like like that too, yeah. you know. So, but that's, that's what I'm saying. It's like the the community, like your peers, all bouncing off each other. If you lot are feeling it, yeah, and it starts there. Like don't like yeah, comparing it to Beyonce or Drake's record, they're trying to serve a different people. So, it, if if you guys are feeling it, then then that's a good place to start. And I, it feels like. That's the most natural thing, right? If yeah. if you if you guys are bouncing to in the studio or yesterday, uh, when I was seeing that DJ, I was like, damn, like that. It doesn't matter that it's not in a stadium in the UK. Like, who cares? Like, it's right here, right now, for the room that get it. And if there's going to be moments when it breaks out further than that, but making you know a room full of people happy is, I don't <laughs> I don't want to undersell like how much of a good thing that is. Like, yeah. if that's 50 people, 30 people, 20 people, just a moment of everyone sharing some joy, like, is powerful, man. Like, it's nice. let's not undersell this. Just because it's not a platinum record, it doesn't mean it's not important. You know? It's like embracing the, the wrong side of it, you know? Like, embracing yeah. the wrong part of the process. No, that, that's the right, that's the, like, that's the thousand years of music. That was the only way to do it anyway. Yeah. So, it, that is more natural than having 
you know, 20 team pe people all Frankenstein in together music. That's that's new. The way uh, people are putting things together here or, you know, in London or whatever, that is probably the more the most organic way. Yeah. So yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, I'm Hello. Lucas, and I want to ask you, like, uh, even you're saying, like, m uh, the music industry is a monopoly and music is free, even at the same time, but in Brazil, had a lot of these things, like, uh, the people want to separate kind of music, like, you, what you're doing is not grime, or what you're doing is not rap, or what you're doing is not electronic music. What do you think about these people, like? Um, I, are they in the room right now? Are they here? No? Maybe. Is there anyone like that in the room? I don't know. Sometimes, obviously, th I'm not doubting that. That's true. Like, we have the same, like, issues in the UK. But uh, is it actually affecting us connecting with people or getting ideas done? Yeah, they might have a voice and a platform or a point of view. But if it's not getting in the way of creating interesting stuff and people being excited about the music, then that's the focus, you know? Uh, there's a lot of voices and opinions, but are they in the dance? Are they in the rave? Are they buying your music? Are they your fan? Are they sharing it on Instagram? No, like so serve them. Like the people that were at the concert yesterday, that's the audience. Someone at home might have tweeted, you know, I don't like Brian, but they weren't there. So the, what their opinion doesn't mean anything. And just like, I've learned over a long period of time to, to be able to tune out of it. It feels loud because it's on Twitter, but in real life, it's all love. So I have to engage with the, the you know, the day-to-day -day of the people that I'm coming across. And that's what I try and say to everyone. Like the the loudest is usually the, the people that are in front of you. If people in front of your face telling you something, then that's a bit different. But usually it's online and gossip or, you know what I mean? That 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 kind of energy. So, um, but I just got here, so I don't know the scene and politics here in Sao Paulo. Um, uh, so, take that with a what's the pinch of salt? Like, a, can you say that here? Take that lightly. I, I don't understand all the scene politics here. Um, um, should we do a couple more, and then we can just like hang out and chat. And if people come into the party later as well. We've got like a party going on. RSVP. Todo mundo vai para collab Legend. hoje. Logo on. Hi. Hi. And I have a question. Uh, what do you think about in this contemporary, all virtual world we live in today? How important you think it is to invest in physical, physical material of your art, like t-shirts, stickers, and everything physical? How you? What do you think about this? Um, yeah, if 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 people want it, if it's if it's in, I don't think it's it's needed just because it's important to have physical items. If people like decided they wanted the the brand vinyl, for example, and then we made it for them, it wasn't. I think it should exist, and you will buy it. It's more like a a conversation and exchange, you know. And when I think of physical, the fi the the most important physical not product, but experience, is something like the club, or the concert, or this, and the memory, rather than the object. Sometimes it's like, okay, we buy something, and then it sits on a shelf. You don't have like an attachment or love for it. You can't remember the day you bought it. You don't have like an emotional attachment. But hopefully, this day, in some for some reason, you won't forget it, you know what I'm saying? And that feels, def that feels like a physical, you know, aspect even though it's not something that's going to sit on the shelf um, I do still make physical stuff so posters stickers some people um, I gave some out earlier on um, but the most you know physical for me is like this in terms of hierarchies this is the top and maybe the objects and you know clothes and all this stuff that's transient or like passing through is like the bottom they're both important but yeah this moment and us all being here again my f fortunate circumstances to to bring me here to brazil is gonna stick with me longer than any physical object will you know uh i think we have 
thinking about what uh, he asked you. Uh, we have a lack of public politics here, uh, reminding of the cultural scene we live in and giving resource and opportunity to lower range classes. I don't know if it's the right expression, but do you guys have in England uh, public politics about cultural movements? Like, I don't know if you spend like two or three months without getting a gig or without releasing a song that gives you enough profits to keep living. Is there money from the government that keeps you paying your bills? No, no. no. And um, hmm? yeah, so there's like f funding for artists, but it's like, it's quite hard to get. And um, usually for like quite experienced or uh, people that are like well read or well educated. Um, but but no, not really. And most, it's, it's, it's very different, but like most artists in the UK, are still, you know, working jobs too. So even people that you see will have, you know, 50,000 followers on Instagram, they do some shows, maybe they get posted on Resident Advisor. They don't post about their work, so you think that's what they do all day, but they have jobs. You know, um, living in London is expensive, even if you have a, if you're a big techno DJ and you're getting one or two gigs a month, for most people, you, you wouldn't be able to live off that. So um, it's, <laughs> it's a completely different set of circumstances. Um, and uh, again, like I'm reminded of our privileges being here, but still the 99% 99, 99 of artists, people in the UK are working jobs, even if it's part-time or full-time. Um, and, I, and, I, and I strongly advocate for that um, because primarily I want people to be, you know, well, safe, have a roof over their head and um, obviously create as well. But um, yeah, but yeah, thanks for the question. Um, but yeah, I like seriously, um, I can't uh, understate or overstate um, how much I appreciate this opportunity and everyone that made it happen. Um, thank you, Cecilia, probably all the team here at State. Um, this is something that came together in the last couple of weeks. Um, um, this is not wasn't my intention when I booked the flights to come. It was just to come and listen, experience what this was. And um, yeah, and uh, been showing a lot of love since. So um, appreciate it. And um, yeah, maybe we could do like a, a picture or something. And, and, and yeah, but I appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs>